Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how I write my books, um, what my writing process is. Um, I think it's different for every writer. Some people plan a lot, other people pitch straight in, um, and I think possibly it can depend on what type of book you're writing as well. It certainly does for me, but I thought I'd, I'd share with you um, the process that I use from the initial idea to, to how I get a, a finished book. Um, the initial idea is, is not a difficult thing for me. Um, I have ideas all the time. My main problem is choosing which idea to focus on, which one to write. And uh, it's a long old business writing a whole book, so it's not unusual for me to start a book and then get another idea and get really interested in that one and then have another idea and get really interested in that one. And all the time there are deadlines and you want to finish things, um, which is really important. So you have to stay focused and the way I do that is to have plans and there may be not um, structures for the actual book necessarily but they are ordered to the way I write at least. So what will happen is I'll decide, right, this is the idea I'm going to stick with for now. And I usually pin an idea down when I get it, maybe just a page or two of mad scribbling and it is, it could be the middle of the night, it could be when I'm out, I get the idea and it's all I can think about. I have to get that idea down. So a notebook, always carry a notebook, of course, and I will just write down the bones of the idea, the character, the setting, um, what the story idea is that's coming to me, and I'll, and I'll put it down on a couple of pages. And usually when an idea is new, I have lots of thoughts about it and it's quite difficult to focus on something else. So I will spend a little time on that, even if it's a day, just getting stuff down. Um, I like mind maps or spidergrams, some people call them, so I will write with a, the central character or the central point of the book and then going out from that, lots of different um, factors attached to the book, uh, key scenes, um, other characters, um, things that I want to include that are, that are striking or uh, visually perhaps. Um, I don't know, just ideas as they come to me. At this stage, it is very muddled, so I just want to get as much as possible down so I don't lose it. And after that, I will probably put it away for a little while and try and think of something else. Um, at any given time, a writer will have lots of different projects on the go at different stages, so it's always easy to use that time well and come back to your new idea um, after a little while. The next step for me is then to make that into a more organised plan. So I will look at my spidergram or my, my mind map and I will try and bring that into a more coherent couple of pages. The sort of couple of pages I could actually show to somebody else <laughs> rather than just being something only I can understand. It's a sort of synopsis but a, a pretty patchy one. Um, and I usually like to get that typed up so that I can read through it and see does that really sound like it's got enough in it to make a book? What's missing? Is there, does there need to be another main character? Is it something I've heard before? Um, is it still exciting me after a couple of days of thinking about it? So, you know, test it out a little bit. At that point I might share it with someone else. If you've got a trusted reader, it could be your, your partner, it could be um, an editor, it could be somebody outside the profession who you knows just a really keen reader, somebody you really trust. Um, but I'm always wary of sharing too much much about my books early on. You can sort of talk it out and then you lose the enthusiasm and the excitement of, of developing something new. So at that stage I've got my scribbled notes, I've got my mind map, and now I've got two sensible pages which sort of amount to some sort of uh, synopsis. And then if I think, yep, this is really something I am going to want to work with, then I will start to do a more detailed outline. And for me, that is a chapter by chapter breakdown of the whole book. That sounds pretty ambitious. And, and, and I think it is. And I have to tell you, there are lots of gaps. So I might have chapters one to 25, type up a document with that set out. And then chapters one to five, I'll have lots going on. I know what's happening. I've got the story kicking off, the main characters. I might have the ending, so I might have the last few chapters, and everything in between might be blank. So it'll take me maybe weeks of going back and thinking about it a little bit more and having an idea and putting stuff into those chapters. And gradually I'll get um, a sense of the shape of the book and the shape of the plot and 
the balance of the book. So that's really important. So that's all sort of mechanical stuff. I've got the characters, I've got the ingredients, I've got the shape. But what about the tone of the book? And that's really, really important. I can't start writing until I can hear the characters' voices in my head. Yes, I do listen to voices in my head and mostly they're my characters, so that's why I listen to those. Once I've got the voice of the main character, I'm much closer to starting. And that usually just does come through the process, trust the process. I've, you've probably heard that, I've been told that a lot of the time. And I think it's true, don't try and force it. You may need to go away and think about it a little bit more. But you will start to hear voices that match the book you're writing rather than just random voices. So when that starts to happen, then I start to make my mind up about two really important things. And one is whose voice is going to tell the story. So what's the point of view going to be? And we will have, don't worry, we will have videos entirely devoted to point of view because it is a subject that everyone ties themselves in knots about me too. So I decide who's telling the story, which point of view. Now it might be more than one point of view, um, it might not. But that, I can't really start writing without that. And the other thing is what tense is it going to be in? Because I do write a lot of my books in the present tense. Um, Sometimes that just seems to be a good fit. I can't give you a better reason than that. Uh, mostly books are written in the past tense, but you know it's entirely up to you if you want to do it in the present tense, the past tense, or even the future tense. It's just got to feel that it fits the story that you're writing at the time. So you've got all that sorted out. Uh, what do you do next? Well, that thing of writing the first scene of your book, I think is it's fantastic. It's It's a really exciting moment because you started you've got all that background work done and now you're ready to go you're ready to really begin that journey of writing your book and at that point you've got all the hope and expectation this is going to be the best book you've ever written everybody's going to love it it's going to work really well um, and that will sustain you in a lot of effort and, and I often write the first few chapters um, very quickly um, and usually go back and edit them quite heavily later on, but that's not the point. The point is that you, you get started then, and that, that's what happens for me anyway, once I get going, once I've got all those other things in place. Um, and my, my technique might vary slightly depending on the, the genre of book or the type of book that I'm doing. We'll, we'll look at um, how that might differ another time, but for now, that's just to let you know how I, I get started on my stories.